Today, we're going to take a look at another anti-feminist video promoting so-called traditionalism. You'll notice a common theme with a lot of traditionalist people. They aren't just looking to live in traditional gender roles, but enforce everything from the golden days, no matter how ridiculous. As a small disclaimer, if you voluntarily want to adhere to traditional 1950s gender roles yourself, that isn't a problem. You're free to make choices. However, the problem is when you try to make others' decisions for them on how they should live their lives. That is my beef with traditionalism. Hey, young miss. Young miss, yeah, you. Do you like diversity? I sure do. Well, there's nothing more supportive of diversity than traditional values. Because 1950s-style conformity where everyone's houses and lawns look the same is the epitome of diversity, right? Traditional values? What's that? Well, I'll show you. Your mom and dad work as a team. While dad is off to work, bringing home financial stability. Mom stays home to take care of the kids in the house. Nope, that's traditional gender roles, which I don't have a problem with as an individual choice. Traditional values go way beyond that and include some authoritarianism. Well, I see. It wouldn't be diversity if I had two moms or two dads. Now you're getting it. These are called gender roles, and it's important to remember that there are only two genders. Homophobia and transphobia, all in one sentence. The only thing missing was some casual racism. Hey, remember last year when I responded to Rage After Storms, the issue with misunderstanding gender roles video, where she ended the video with racial propaganda? We're dying out and it's not good. Because whilst you're deciding whether to buy a Chipotle burrito every day for 97 years or having a child, these people are getting kid after kid after fucking kid. This video is basically a diet version of that, except replace racist propaganda with homophobic propaganda. They can indeed, but that's still because of a straight relationship somewhere. Hey, think about this. In a gay marriage, you're only experiencing love from one gender growing up. Growing up in a straight family, you learn the variety of two different kinds of love and nurture and care. It's more fulfilling. Even if one would disagree, an undeniable fact is that only straight marriages produce children. The future. Gee, missus, that all sounds a little bit bigoted and misogynistic to me. Are you a Nazi? When the straw man you created does a much better job at showing the inaccuracies of your argument than I ever could, you're doing something wrong. And the sad thing is, this is only just the intro skit. We haven't even gotten to the main part of this video yet. Strap in and hold on, as this is going to get ugly. Welcome to another salty circus. Today's topic is very salty indeed. Traditional values, otherwise known as keeping it classy. When many hear traditional values, they think good manners. As you're about to find out, that is not what's meant here. And in fact, from my experience, people on the left tend to actually have better manners than so-called traditionalists. Now let me explain that whole skip thing that I just happened on traditional marriage. Disclaimer, I have a lot of gay friends. It wouldn't be a shitlord video without the obligatory, I can't be a bigot. I have friends from the group I'm about to demean and dehumanize. No, I don't hate gays or wish any evil upon them. You don't have to be Fred Phelps to be a homophobe. If you think any group of people should be denied rights because of who they are, you are, by definition, a bigot. However, I do not stand for gay marriage for the politically scientific fact that 
gay marriage does not benefit society whatsoever. I mean, do you really think the universe is going to thank these guys for anything? Do you think the universe is going to thank you for anything? No. The vast universe we live in, if it were a sentient being, wouldn't care about the goings-on of a random hunk of space rock orbiting around a star. Regardless, we live on a hunk of space rock, so it does impact us. To say that gay marriage doesn't benefit society at all is not only disgusting and hateful, but factually wrong as well. When two people who love each other have spent their entire lives together, why should they be denied the legal benefits that come with marriage that straight couples can enjoy. Why should a man who's been with another man, or a woman who's been with another woman, not be the first in line for the inheritance or life insurance money when their partner passes away? Marriage isn't just about walking down the aisle of a church. Children are the future, and whether or not that child was adopted by a lovely gay couple, he or she is still the product of a straight relationship. A child that was adopted or is still in the adoption process at the foster homes and stuff, they have already been rejected by their biological parents. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Have you heard of test tube babies? Made by scientific breakthroughs, sure, but that puts a monkey wrench in your, you need a mom and dad. Also, what about situations where both parents are dead and the child is an orphan and the parents had no say in the matter? Besides, even in situations where the child is given up for adoption because of the parents rejecting the child, such a judgmental choice of words, by the way, wouldn't you rather be raised in a healthy family environment than one where the child won't be healthy. Same-sex couples adopting them and loving them is great and all, but it doesn't really teach them that there is more than one way to receive love. On the contrary, it shows them that you can have two dads or two moms, and that's different from a mom and a dad. Unless the child is completely isolated from all other children, they'll know perfectly well about other forms of relationships. There is a difference between the way a man and a woman show love. They show love differently. Traditionally, a mother is nurturing, compassionate, emotional, and a father is the protector, the strong head, the, the leader. Imagine raising a child with only emotion. They would have no leadership strength when they grow up because they were never taught it. But raise a child with only a strict leader, the child will have no emotion or at least know how to express that emotion. Wow. Here come the debunk gender stereotypes rearing their ugly heads again. No, men and women are not biologically predestined to have certain personality traits. A lot of behaviors that we define as male and female are learned. Here's a great example. In Western society, we have a perception of dogs as masculine and cats as feminine, and we kind of push them into our own manufactured gender stereotypes. Look at the results. Dogs, both male and female, tend to to act in ways we describe as masculine, and cats tend to act in ways we describe as feminine. Compare this to stray or wild cats and dogs, they act nothing like our pets do. Diversity and balance is key. Leftists constantly promote diversity, but then want same-sex marriage, safe spaces, one-race movements, one-gender movements, only accepting non-white, non-male promotees. The list goes on forever. Hey, I haven't used this clip in a while. Let's rectify that. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. That's what leftists define as diversity. Now, I'm not saying that a gay couple can't raise a child with a healthy, balanced meal of love. Yes, you are. You're saying because you believe in outmoded gender stereotypes that a gay couple shouldn't adopt. The bottom line is that teamwork, diversity, morality, yin and yang are mostly found in traditional family homes. And non-traditional homes. And single-parent homes. Studies have shown that most housewives are more satisfied than working women, and that gender roles bring more happiness. Happiness defined as fulfilled, not happy as in the weed man isn't dry. And studies have shown that house husbands are happier on average. However, we're defining happy as lower levels of stress, which is fallacious. An actor or actress, a musician, anyone who has an art job that requires a ton of elbow grease is often happy, but very stressed out, especially when they're not bringing home the bacon and have to take a second job in order to pay the bills. Traditional values also collide with today's polyamorous society. Polyamorous society. I wish society was accepting of polyamory, as you right-wingers like to pretend it is. Another statistic even shows that chastity before marriage is healthier in the relationship. 16 of the married people who were interviewed 
waited until marriage. Did you know that 96% of all statistics are made up on the spot? The same study also found that 4 out of 3 people don't understand fractions. A study by the same institute showed that 100% of people who consumed dehydrogen monoxide became dependent on it to the point that withdrawal from it meant eventual death. Of that 16%, relationship stability was 22% higher than the rest of them. Overall fulfillment and satisfaction was 20% higher and sex life was 15% better than the people who didn't wait. Assuming these studies aren't total horseshit, have you looked at other factors? Like maybe they had nothing to reference them against? Also, what does this have to do with gay people? There are gay people who are virgins until marriage. But I know why you're jumping into left field. Pushing repressive values of the church seems to be the in thing these days. I have to wonder, do you practice what you preach or are you another Lauren Southern? Communication was even 12% better between the two. People's overall benefits who didn't wait till marriage were about half as those who waited. Raise a child in a less or more functioning home. Which is right and which is left. I mean wrong. Maybe the people who reported greater happiness could be best compared to children who have never left their home county and going to the beach means the sandy rocky share of a small local lake. Compare this to kids who go to the beach a few times a year, the one by the ocean. The first set of kids will say they go to the beach more. I will say I don't know for sure, but I'm at least willing to look beyond the numbers and investigate them further. How can you celebrate diversity with same-sex marriage? I dive into the whole don't make bakers make your wedding cake for a gay marriage if they don't want to, let them lose business on their own, if it hadn't been beaten to death already. I bet like all free market conservatives, you probably would lose your shit if the same bakers refused to make a confederate flag cake. Or for a more accurate example, if a gay bakery opened and refused to make a cake for a straight couple. Suddenly, you don't be pro-free market. Seeing conservative reactions to Nike says it all. There's tons of legitimate reasons to hate Nike, and yet right-wingers pick the most asinine one. Let's make this simple. You remember when we were kids and we used that three players but two controllers system? We would swap out the losers. It was efficient and fair, no matter how much you cried. Fair because you didn't have the right to the winner's product of labor. And it was a rule that we all abided and benefited from. It's the perfect system. That's capitalism. That's literally capitalism. You. You idiots. Yeah, I'm an anarchist, so your capitalism's the perfect system bullshit doesn't work on me. Also, your analogy is kind of flawed, because it was an agreed upon system between players. A capitalist system between the three players would be the winner gets to take ownership of the games entirely and bring them back to their house, regardless of whether or not it was agreed upon. But Kazette, what if the winner is so good that he starts a monopoly on the controller and just hogs it? Well, that's when mom comes in and reinforces taking turns. Government regulation. The only thing besides protecting our country our government's good for. Wait, so you're not really promoting laissez-faire capitalism. You're agreeing that there needs to be limits on people hogging all the resources, right? Government should stay out of our marriage and stay out of our game playing, unless it gets too intense. Sounds like you actually want government to get involved and ban gay marriage. I hate to break it to you, but marriage and government have been a thing for centuries. It hasn't been a solely religious function for ages. That's a metaphor. Straight marriage works. By straight marriage, you mean straight only marriage, of course. Did you know that there was a time when interracial marriage was illegal? And before that, a time when marriage between people of different class standings was illegal? And also, there was a time when interfaith marriage was illegal? Hell, some places still frown upon Catholic and Protestant marriages. Capitalism works. And that's why it needs to go. Capitalism works well in that it does what it's supposed to. It's a death machine that works people to death for a single fat cat to gather wealth and must be destroyed. Traditional values work. Yeah, I wasn't convinced when Rage After Storm endorsed it last year, and I'm sure as hell not convinced now either. Just because you're slightly less hateful than I am Manuela, doesn't mean you're not a homophobic bigot. Thanks to Trump and Pence, hateful bigots feel re-energized to spew the same vitriol that we were hoping was socially unacceptable in the modern times. But it's back, like a turd that won't flush. But now that that far-right homophobic bullshit is done, I can get back to enjoying my weekend and celebrating my my birthday. Until next time, I'm Danny Quartz. Thank you all for watching.